The Devil You Know is about a new reporter, Evie Jones, who is assigned to a really hard story. She is covering the arrest and police investigation of a serial rapist and murderer who has haunted her city for years. Um, but Evie has a backstory, and this backstory is actually going to make it much harder for her to do her job. Her own best friend was abducted and killed when they were only 11, and that killer has never been caught. So Evie's now going to use all the tools of her trade as a journalist to try and solve that while she's also doing her regular job. It's the beginning of the internet, so she has a lot of tools on her side that she hasn't had it before. The Devil You Know is actually set in Toronto in 1993 against the backdrop of the arrest and investigation of real-life serial rapist and murderer Paul Bernardo and the incredible amount of fear that pervaded that community. I actually grew up in Toronto through the late 80s and early 90s, a time that in Toronto was so coloured uh, by the Scarborough rapist and the murders that were later attributed to Paul Bernardo, so I lived that very closely as a teenage girl. Beyond that, I think The Devil You Know is more relevant today than ever in terms of the current climate of our discussion around sex assault and, and violence against women, I think this book actually couldn't be coming out at a more fitting time. There's a scene early in The Devil You Know where Evie and her mother are at a flea market and they find an old copy of Helter Skelter, which is the true crime account of the Charles Manson murders, and they get to talking about true crime and why are women such voracious readers of true crime, it's something that we know is true. Women are much bigger readers of the true crime genre than men are. And Evie kind of wonders aloud, is this because we're trying to live vicariously somehow? And her mother says, no, we read this stuff because we're trying to learn how to get away. For any woman coming of age, um, you're trying to build your own life, which requires a lot of independence and a lot of fearlessness. And at the same time, girls and women are constantly told to be afraid. They're constantly told to fear for their own personal safety, which is such a basic thing. That's a monumental conflict to have to negotiate all the time, and I think it's exhausting. And we see this so clearly in Evie. There's um, a scene where she's sitting in the car in a parking garage, and she's just kind of rhyming off statistics about women's safety. I'm more likely to get raped if I'm wearing a ponytail. I'm less likely to get raped if I have an umbrella. And these kinds of statistics, these facts, are things that women actually just carry around with them all the time. It's like an absurd Rolodex that you have in your back pocket. I actually got those statistics from my daughter, who was 15 at the time, and they had, she'd found them in a magazine that was aimed at teenage girls. So that's the level to which this spirit of anxiety just pervades girls' lives from a very early age. I had such a great time writing Evie, because even though she's doing a really hard thing, and she's had in some ways a very hard life history, she's incredibly funny, and she's smart, and she's got a sort of a cutting wit that allows her to survive all this, to, to deal with all this very hard material and yet get through it. Um, she has a very quirky relationship as well with a kind of on-again, off-again boyfriend, David Patton, um, and I really liked watching the two of them interact. So from that point of view, it was very pleasurable to get to write her because even though she was doing all these hard things, I kind of wanted to be her friend. When I was first doing very early promotion on the book um, and the story was starting to come out, I was really wondering about the Bernardo aspect and, and how that would be received and I began to receive emails from women that I had never met before and the emails and the phone calls all said the same thing. I am so glad you're writing about this. Can we finally talk about this now? I think we have to talk about this now.